sitting here and I just want to take just a couple minutes and talk a little bit about education. So I have a bachelor's degree in English literature and I have a master's degree in English literature. And my focus in grad school in particular was on critical theory. Uh, I went to UC Irvine for my undergrad and that is a critical theory school. And so when I was there, I very much delved into sort of how philosophy overlaps and how criticism overlaps with literature. And um, so when I was in grad school, I really, really got into that and I fell in love with feminist criticism and post-colonial criticism. So literature and studying literature and not just the actual content, but the style of that literature and sort of the context in which that literature was written and all the symbolism and the illusions in that literature, the theory that, you know, is behind that lid. Those are the things that interest me most, and so this is why today I'm very involved in Periscope 50 um, with my group, and why I do Periscopes on topics that relate to, you know, social justice issues and things like that. So I think a lot of my fitness career has been impacted by my love of literature, and my love of education, my love of studying these things. So I highly, highly recommend that if you want to know more about your kind of position in society and your own interpretations of yourself, then dive into a book. I've learned more about myself from seeing characters in various books and seeing how various situations play out in books and so sometimes when things will happen to me in real life I'll be like, oh it reminds me of this book that I read where this situation happened with this group of characters. In addition to that, I read a lot of non-fiction works today. I'm probably more interested in reading non-fiction today than I am in reading fiction. Um, however, I'm going to attempt Pynchon again. I tried to read Gravity's Rainbow back when I was an undergrad. I tried to read it three separate times <laughs> and I couldn't get through it. When I was in grad school, I was busy reading other things and I never got really the chance to read Pynchon, but I am going to attempt reading The Crying, Lot, the Crying of Lot 49 because it's probably one of his most successful books. And I'm really, really excited. It's the first piece of fiction I've read in a little while. I've been reading a lot of nonfiction. You guys see those recommendations when I post them on the Oh It Fits Feminism tag. But moving on back to my kind of understanding of how important education is, I genuinely believe that you feed yourself best when you are feeding yourself knowledge through literature and through reading. Several months back I actually posted a post on Instagram where I talked about the overlap between education and fitness and in particular the overlap between education and people who follow flexible diets and who are interested in science. You know I write a lot of things on my blog or I write long captions and I find that people are less interested in engaging with that content sometimes than they are in just liking a photo that I post of my butt. But I get it, you know, it's a lot of work to do the reading, to do the education part of it, to learn the knowledge. Sometimes people just want to be fed all that knowledge and told all the answers instead of having to learn those things for themselves. But I am absolutely of the belief that you are going to learn the most if you spend the time doing the reading, understanding the criticism, seeking out knowledge for yourself. And I know that I've had the privilege of having a college education in English literature, which led to my study of critical theory, all things that overlap with my own fitness journey and my journey towards self-love, my understanding and deconstructing of gender roles in society and of femininity especially in the weightlifting community. And I understand that those things are a privilege that other people have not had, but I do really encourage people to seek out that knowledge. It's going to make you feel empowered because you've really studied that literature on your own and you've gleaned your own understanding of those things. So what I'm really trying to say in my little rambly rant is that knowledge is power, education is power, and get yourself, whether it's in a bookstore or online reading things, or whether you download ebooks, wherever you get your lit, but do the work. You know, a lot of people are like, I'm so bored tonight, read a book. <laughs> You know, I'm not one to like go out and party and I don't go to bars, I don't do those things. I would much rather curl up with a book and I think 
the cool thing about books is that not only are you getting a sense of enjoyment because you're getting to experience new worlds and um, new people and new characters and new situations, but you're also bettering yourself for the future because you get to draw from those experiences. Also, final note, it really, really helps expand, I think, your vocabulary and your own writing. I think that I'm a much better writer because I am a really avid reader. Today is April 24th, it's Sunday morning. I just wanted to really briefly make a little clip, Leia's coming in here, to talk about a couple things that have just been on my heart. Robin and Emily and I have all been talking, we've been actually talking about like personalities and introverted personalities, extroverted personalities, and I believe that I am actually a very, very, very extroverted person. And if you met me in person, I'm really loud and bubbly. However, I am extremely comfortable being by myself and being alone, training alone, going out to eat alone, going to concerts by myself. When I was in college and my friends would go out to bars or we'd go out to a party, I would go with them. But the minute I got there, I would be overwhelmed by a serious sense of anxiety because I felt overwhelmed and I felt out of place and I thought something was wrong with me. Here I am, this extroverted person who's very comfortable around my friends, but when I get into these environments, I couldn't function, I couldn't fit in, and I just wanted to go home. I always thought that maybe I was suffering from, you know, forms of anxiety or depression, but really I realized that just because I feel extroverted in certain situations, it doesn't mean that I have to feel extroverted all the time. And in fact, being around other people who are extremely extroverted and are demanding attention and fun and loudness often very um, much drains me and takes away from my enjoyment of a situation. Because I think that I can have a relationship with someone in a private setting, maybe just the two of us, in a way that I wouldn't be able to have that same form of relationship um, with that same person in a group environment. So that's one thing. But then another thing that's on my heart is um, releasing things that do not serve you. Lately, I have been kind of mulling over some negativity that has been thrown my way. I mean, many of you are aware of um, that site, that cesspool of horrible, terrible, horrible human beings. So there's a lot of pages dedicated to hate of a lot of bloggers, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of Instagram people. I am not bothered by the things that those people say they're gonna say what they're gonna say because they have chosen actually not to just hate me but actually delight in hating me. And I really am troubled by more so the types of people that access and spend their time on those sites. Hours of their time typing out literally transcripts of the things that I say on, pub on public periscopes um, and then dissecting those things and mocking me and talking about my profession and my life and my boyfriend and my hair and what color my hair is and whether or not I'm a real professor and all these things. You know, I recently had someone who came to me who was actually a member of that site previously and said, actually, you know, I left that site. I have sort of a newfound respect for you because of the things that you talk about. Um, you talk about privilege and you talk about your platform. And that was encouraging to me to hear that someone actually thought critically about, um, number one, that you're never gonna like every single aspect of an individual, especially someone that you see online where you only see bits and pieces of my life and you don't know me for real in real life, though I do try to show a genuine self online. I think it's important to do so. And number two, to think critically about how you know, your thoughts and feelings about someone can actually just be reflections of yourself and your own insecurities. Misery does love company and people love to kind of sit in pools of hive mind hate. And that's just something I'm not really interested in taking part in. And I'm not here to defend myself against any of the claims or allegations or hate that is 
spewed um, against me or anyone else. I do think there is something to be said about having a social media platform and being criticized and I think that it's important. We should be critical of people um, that we see on social media that espouse certain mentality, that share their stories. I think it's important to be critical of people. But I also do think that if you are going to be critical of someone, you should consider why you're being critical of them and what your aim and what your goal is in being critical of them. If you are going to call someone out for doing something wrong or something that you find offensive, what is your aim there? What is your purpose? Is it to have them hear you so that eventually they change? Well, if it is, then, then give them the chance to change or you know, give them some space to actually um, make some decisions that show that they're actively thinking about their choices. And if they do genuinely change, or if they do find themselves in a new place, then be encouraged by that and be happy about that and let them go on their merry way. You don't have to continue to like them or follow them or support them, um, but you can stop throwing shade at them, right? Because I do think that if we're going to be critical and if we're going to think critically about our spaces in society and other people's spaces in society, then we need to call them out when they're being problematic, but give them the chance to actually change. Because I think if we continue to throw shade at people who are genuinely making an effort to become better people, of course, humans are flawed. You're never going to be completely unproblematic. Then if we continue to call them out, if we continue to throw shade at them when they're actively trying to change, then it's no longer about that person and it becomes about you. You know, it becomes about um, the person who's throwing shade and then trying to be in the spotlight um, instead of actually then trying to make that person change. So I think that's something that's, you know, sort of kind of weighing on me and a, a sense of personal obligation and responsibility. I think I, I know, I'm, I'm well aware that I am so opinionated to the point that it's oftentimes confrontational. This is part of my personality and it's a flaw of mine that I am quick to get defensive about things or um, when something is offensive to me or something is hurtful to me or someone that I'm close to, I'm quick to be opinionated about it and um, oftentimes I don't listen to other perspectives or I'm unwilling to hear all sides of a story um, before I give my opinion or before I start to speak over someone. And that's something I'm actively working on to try to change. It's something that I see as a flaw of mine and I'm very willing to admit that. I mean, everyone has flaws and that's definitely one of mine. I'm well aware that there are many people who are not going to like me and also that they've sometimes chosen not to like me and delighted in not liking me. And, you know, Nayira Wahid has this quote where she says, you cannot guilt someone to stop hating, right? Essentially, I'm, I'm botching her words, but basically you can't guilt someone out of hate because some people take pleasure in hate. And um, again, that's just not something that I'm trying to be a part of and I want to continue to promote positivity. And if I'm gonna call out someone for being problematic, I wanna give them the space to change. So I'm hoping that um, people who follow me, that when they see me do something problematic or they um, find a flaw in my reasoning, that they'll give me that space to change instead of just latching on to hive mind hate. <laughs> so anyways, love you guys, talk to you soon.